Are you pink or yellow? Oh, yellow. I'm actually orange. Yeah. Bit, bit over. So you always start knitting. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I can get a bit of 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 Hello, I'm Dr Elizabeth Gaston. I'm a senior teaching fellow at the University of Leeds. And I'm Dr Jane Scott. I'm also a senior teaching fellow and I am a knit specialist within the department. We've been working collaboratively on the Make Your Future project, specialising in introducing knit into schools, uniting both of our individual research areas, but really looking more at um, challenging the idea of knit as being a limited product. So we were very keen to keep it away from the perceptions we'd had going in when we'd asked um, the kids about what they thought knitting would be, and it was very much focused on clothing and garments, and we were really interested in trying to change that. So we were looking at very much more experimental form, thinking about knit in 3D, um, very um, low-tech handmade outcomes to start with. Um, and then we introduced them to very high-tech, high-level technologies that we have at the university. As part of the project with Beckford Upper Heaton, um, they were using the same equipment, the same space that our students use and the same technology. We did a particular project with that school, translating their hand-drawn portraits into um, kind of a large installation. For that, we used our CNC knit machines, which are Shima Siki machines. Still the same loop formation process, so it was, they could see that what they made in their hands was now being made on a machine, so that again, they could see the hand craft process was really relevant in a manufacturing situation. With another school that we worked with, we decided we'd like to try and do kind of an involved project based on some of my research, which looks at biomimicry. So biomimicry being um, a way to translate functionalities in nature into design outcomes. How we can make smart textiles that change in shape and form, but actually make them from conventional textile fibres, so without the need to use shape memory materials or kind of very complex synthetic fibres. Um, and what we did with the school was to try and think about how plant growth systems, so how leaves and flowers grow, how that could be um, adapted into a mechanism for making and knitting. They responded brilliantly um, and I think what we tried to do through kind of this, the activity was to really bring it back down to looking, so looking and observing and seeing what was happening and they really liked that idea of bringing science and craft and design all together and that they could produce these kind of physical outcomes from quite abstract scientific concepts. The students we worked with were so open to experiencing everything and anything. By the end, they really understood that knit has much wider applications than just apparel. Um, and whilst apparel is still important and they still talked about scarves and jumpers, they were looking at it as a tool for problem solving rather than as a product. And I think um, it was also really useful for them to, to experience that textiles way of thinking about making and about materials. You know, what happens if I make in a cotton? What happens if I'm using a wool or a silk? How does that change the outcome? And I think those kind of um, deeper understanding of materials is something that they'll take away and be able to use within textiles, but also much more widely.